posing. <laughs> 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 Greetings everyone, this is Stally330, BCG, MMG, and you checking out Stash TV. Cops on my heels, but I'm beating down still. Chrome on my left for these jackets out to kill. Feet size to kill. It's magic how the paint pop the grill. Pop the clutch and switch. Honest Cowboy title came about just uh, me. me. Me being a cowboy. Uh, me being also infatuated by the uh, cowboy culture and also, you know, my father being a cowboy. Uh, I feel like uh, rappers are somewhat of cowboys, you know, even minus the gunslinging and things like that. Uh, we go out there, we, we hustling day to day, uh, traveling around the world just to bring back, you know, uh, food and keep shelter over our families, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, we outlaws for real, you know what I mean? And, uh, whatever we do, we do it with passion, uh, we do it with honor, and we also uh, speak how we feel, you know, no matter how uh, anyone else feels or what they have to say about it, you know, a true boy, a true cowboy uh, speaks his mind at all times, so. Oh uh, man, it's like the mixture of both, you know, it's a, it's a mixture of Lincoln Way Nights and Savage Journey, but, you know, it also get. It, I mean, it always gets better, um, the sound, it always develops into a bigger sound than the last project, and that's all I'm trying to do is stay consistent, persistent with that sound, and just keep getting better and better, and, um, you know, making the music that I love and my fans love to hear. I usually don't listen to a lot of music, but I, I was listening to everything, man. I was listening to Kurt Vile, John Mayer. Um, I did a lot of reading, though. You know, um, I'm always, you know, tapping into the books because I don't like to really get influenced by different sounds from outside music. So I like to really just um, zone in, hone in on my own thoughts and my own ideas, and also, you know, do some reading. I was reading, um, man some Charles Bukowski, some Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, I think I, I reread Rum Diary. Uh, I was reading like some poems and short stories by Charles Bukowski. Uh, so just things like that. I mean, that, that book, um, you know, by Charles Bukowski with his short stories and poems, uh, The Muse, it, it really helped me, you know what I mean, kind of start to think about my personal life or try to dig back into my childhood and the, the different memories that I had growing up with and without my father and around my family and friends. So that was something that kind of had an influence. Um, growing up, blues was played in my house, funk was played, jazz was played. So you'll definitely hear some of those influences, I mean, some of those sounds into the music because it has influenced my sound. Um, and, and just, you know, always been around through me listening to music growing up. So I, I definitely feel like it's important because, I mean, to, to, to kids to a younger generation, blues and jazz might be like dinosaurs to them, you know what I mean? So it's definitely important that we, we give that history. Even if it's a music class in school, you know, um, we definitely need more musicians. You know, everybody wants to just pick up a beat program and make beats, but let's let's get you know people back picking up instruments and playing them. Photographer who kind of practices like a you know a disappearing form of photography. <laughs> right. Can you kind of like explain that? Yeah, uh, it was just. Rob Kendrick is his name. It was amazing, you know what I mean? He's someone who still shoots in tintype. Tintype is a special, you know, um, way of photography. Um, it's still that old, pull the drape over, take the picture, use chemicals and different solutions to, you know, actually develop that photo. And um, it's just great to see it. Uh, I won't give you away, I won't give away everything, and I can't really explain it the way he can, but we do have some behind the scenes. Uh, vlogs where he's speaking about the process and showing the process, so I, I'll save that for that. What's the most pimp thing you have in your wardrobe? Man, it ain't really pimp. I, I probably, man, I got a leather hat, you know what I mean? Like a, a leather Don C, you know what I mean? Shout out to Just Don Midwest player right there, you know, uh, but I, I, I love those hats, by the way, because it is so Midwest. Like when I was growing up, all the fly pimps and players and hustlers had a leather brim, you know what I mean? Uh, whether it was a five panel or fitted, or even if it was a fedora or something, they just had a leather cap, you know, with the nice fur, some shoes on, some gaiters or mori. So yeah, that just bring me back to them times. I feel like it's a, it's, it was well put together. Um, 
I, I feel like it's the most that I've spent on reflecting and, and trying to dig deep inside. I'm still not as out in the open and as personal as I would like because I'm saving it a lot for the album or a lot of it for the album, but it's definitely some of the most unique and, and, and self-explanatory music that I put together. I don't know if you got a chance to see Action Bronson perform in a nursing home, in a retirement home. I did. I, I was, I would perform in a school in the middle of like them just being in school. Like I just bust up in there and start rapping. The <laughs> yeah, in the hallways, going down the hallways, just <laughs> rapping. And <laughs> like, and, and at test time too, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, cause I just would like to see the teachers and principals faces, you know, that, that would be something cool. <laughs> um, Maybe I'll bust up in church and start rapping or something. I'll do something rebellious, you know what I'm saying? Like, but. Yeah. <laughs>